I read quite a bit of poetry. That's probably actually a podcast in its own right. Um, the word downsize, it's a pretty ugly word, and I don't think I've ever seen it in any sort of poem, although somebody will probably now send me through a poem about downsizing or write one for me. Uh, it sounds like a Poundland version of a McDonald's supersize. There's just something about it that doesn't quite work. But the more I thought about it, it is somehow quite apt because you've got these two words that actually slightly butt up against each other and don't really quite sound or look right. And as I thought about it, that actually is one of the problems with downsizing your property. On one hand, you've got this, what appears to be a very simple, clear idea that downsizing makes an awful lot of sense for the reasons we'll discuss. But you've then got all these issues and problems attached with it, which butt up against it. And the problem with that, more than anything else, I think, is it means people don't do it. This podcast is not to get everybody to downsize. It's to try to encourage people who we know there are a lot of people for whom it would be a really good idea to think about doing it and to overcome some of those problems. So... Candice uh, is joining me again today. Well, welcome back to the Sunday Property Breakfast. Always happy to join you, Adrian. Thank you very much. So we'll talk about the sort of two bits that butt up against each other. Um, and we're going to talk, though, today about the psychological, emotional and sort of practical ideas of it. But it cannot be separated from the financial elements of it, but from the point of view of the podcast we are. So next week, we've got Mike Roberts from Penny Matters, who is going to talk purely about the financial sides of it. But today, it's about the practicals and the emotional bit. Um, we've produced a bit of a guide, a bit of a checklist of how you can get your head around the idea. But the best way to do that would be for us just to come and see you um, and give you some ideas on whether it's the right thing for you to do and then the early stages of going about that. I just want to put it into um, some sort of context, though, about a downsized move. With the exception of bereavement and a relationship breakdown, most of your property moves are usually quite buoyant. They are a happy experience. They're a positive thing. It's your first home. It's your marital home. It's your, uh, the first home you buy with children or another home when the children grow up. Um, it may be a house that is just a bigger and better house because you've got a job promotion and you've, you've improved your status. So they're all positive things. The downsizing one uh, is the first time, with the exception, as I say, of, of separation and bereavement, where the move may not just be a pure happy one. There are good reasons for doing it, but it's a reminder, perhaps, of uh, the fact you're going to be buying something smaller. It doesn't necessarily, by the way, mean a lower value. Quite a lot of people who downsize uh, spend the same amount of money on the new property. But it's perhaps a reminder or a, uh, an acknowledgement of age and mobility issues. Um, and for the first time, you know, that you, we're all human. Um, and that, I think, is an important point because most people who buy property are on an exciting journey and this one isn't always as exciting. We want the discussions to really raise two sort of questions and we're going to ask a number of questions between us that raise two questions and they are is downsizing right for you or somebody you know and then how do you start to go about it uh, in order to make it less stressful and actually get it done which I think is the main main point. So Candice um, chucking you straight in the um, deep end downsizing what do you think about it what what occurs to you when you well, two things words. occur to me, really. It's, it's normally you would think to yourself, well, are you downsizing because you want to minimalize, make things more simpler in your life? And if that's the case, I think it's, it's absolutely wonderful to do so. I think it takes a lot of courage and commitment to, to stick to that plan. Um, and if it's on the other side of the coin, having to downsize, as we know, due to bereavement or due to financial matters, whatever the case may be, it's not as easy. It, it, it definitely tampers with your with your mental health if you're not prepared for it. And I have seen so many people who's not been prepared for it at all and it actually hits them so, so hard. And when that happens, you need to know you've got all the support you need. So when you say that it hits them hard, do you mean when they've downsized or the whole idea? It's the idea. Yeah, and, and as a result of that block, they don't do it? A lot of them block it, but they have to get to a point where they just do it. Okay. And... A lot of times, a lot of these lovely people actually need to seek psychological help. 
depending on as to why they have to downsize. Yeah. As you and I both know, many people are, are very attached to their material belongings. A lot of it has sentimental value. So where do you start? Yeah, yeah. No, I think it's a really good point. I um, worked for a while in the retirement sector. I ran a part exchange business and most of it was in the retirement sector. And I saw so many instances of people who finally made the move. And we're not talking here about moving into a retirement home, which is another separate discussion. But people who went through these same discussions of moving to somewhere smaller, how do they deal with all this stuff? The amount of people we met who, who'd finally gone through this move that we facilitated with part exchange, who said, why, why did I not do this last year, a year before, sometimes five years ago? They were hanging on to the garden, the garage, the fourth bedroom, the, uh, you know, the second en suite. Something about it was hanging on to it. And then they'd suddenly got rid of all this stuff. And I remember one particular lady um, when I went to this development we were working on who'd moved and I saw her and I had a chat with her. I said, hey, you know, how, are you, how are you feeling? And she says, I love the fact I wake up in the morning and I've got nothing to do other than what I want to do. I haven't got to think about maintaining the garden. Is the guy going to turn up to do the lawn? I've got another room to clean. She says, I can clean my flat in about five minutes. So I've seen that sort of pressure mm. be released, but I've also seen an awful lot of people who never released it and stayed stayed too long and then either never moved or when they moved it became far more difficult because they were less capable less less uh physically able to do it i mean on on that subject when a person loses someone they love due to to death for example and you're at a certain age and you've got to downsize going to retirement home as an example I think a lot of people feel, why do I have to give up my sentimental things that I have accumulated up for years that reminds me of the life I once had? Yep. So th th that as a whole, I think, can, can really cause a lot of these people to end up having a lot of difficulty trying to move forward. I don't want to call it moving on. I don't think anybody yep. can ever move on from that. But when you can downsize and you minimalize, there is a level of freedom, as you said before. You, you're no longer focusing on the garden. You're no longer focusing on the ensuite. It's a whole new level Focus of freedom. On me or us. Yeah. Exactly. It becomes about the individual or the us. Yeah. And there's so much power in that. Yes. And as I said, it's not perfect for everybody. Not necessarily the right decision. I mentioned that we've got a guide that we've put together. And I'm just going to reel off, not for long discussion here, but reel off a few of the reasons why people would do it or why it's a good idea. And then Candice is just going to reel off a similar, not necessarily countering each one, but just the reasons why it's not necessarily the wrong idea, but why it's then difficult to do it. So there's obvious things like you're reducing the, your expenses and your cost of physically living in the property. You're simplifying your lifestyle. This is something we've already touched on. You know, right. Less stuff around you. It's amazing how, if ever you've done a spring clean, God, how good does that feel? This is like a spring, okay, right? Spring, summer, autumn, winter um, clean. Less maintenance, smaller spaces, more time mm. to do what you want to do. If you're wearing uh, an eco hat, it's, you know, suddenly you are putting less environmental impact out there as well. Financial freedom. You don't necessarily, uh, not everybody downsizes to a, a lower value home. They just downsize to a more appropriate property. But if you've got lower costs of running your property and you're not faced with financial difficulty, suddenly you've got money to just spend on socialising, travelling. Um, I think quite a few people find that a smaller space can actually be more cosy, uh, can actually be more a more enjoyable space to live in in a, in a strange way, but they don't know it until they've moved. Um, it encourages minimalism. Uh, I suppose, again, the bigger picture of that is we use less, we consume less, we're not sort of destroying the planet um, and if you are downsizing and to a lower value then obviously there is the equity issue of freeing up a lump sum of capital capital that's something we'll talk about um, uh, more next week about what you do with that how you how you um, how you use that or can monetize that chuck some ideas at me as to why that sounds like I'm sign me up for downsizing today why would I say oh no this, these are the problems that are going to be thrown at me so I think at the moment what we are seeing is that there are a lot of families that don't have a choice at the moment but to downsize, right? Okay. So if I am that client, I've got a family, both of us are working and 
all of a sudden, because of interest rates, et cetera, et cetera, we can't afford our mortgage anymore. We have no choice but to downsize. So my thoughts here are, I'm thinking older age group. You're thinking... Older. You're thinking... I'm thinking... Cost of living. That's right. Yeah, just a that's simple... That's right, because that at the moment is a theme. Yeah. We are we are currently in that situation as as people. And, of course, this will, this will come and go as it normally does, as we yeah. saw many years back. Um, as an... If that was me, what would you tell me would be the benefits to downsizing yes. besides the obvious? I think probably more um, uh, marital issues, more stress issues, more emotional issues are caused by financial problems than anything else. Correct. And people don't normally talk about them. Right. People talk about anything in a pub apart from money. Yes. Uh, but the only money talk you'll hear in a pub is somebody who's put a bet on a on a, a football match where they've won. They won't tell you about the ten. It's the lost. white elephant in the room. Yeah, yeah. So people don't talk about that, and that probably causes the greatest elements of stress. So by relieving that element of it, you might be in a smaller property. You might be in, in this instance, actually a a lower value property of the same size, mm. which is a slightly different uh, thought process. But correct. Um, is the one that you're thinking of. You've got a family of four, you still need a certain number of bedrooms, but you move to a, you know, a, a less expensive area. So that Correct. could be something you do. But in terms of the other things we had in the guide, um, you can use your crib notes, by the way, because, you know, as you know, I wrote it. I'm terrible with using notes. <laughs> I'm awful. I'll have you know. What were the other things that countered the, what, you know, the glowing ideas here? What are the things that then throw the problems in um, that we... So on the, on, on a negative, the negative side of, of the coin, so to speak, I would say that a lot of people think that they are failure, failures because they have to downsize, but that's not the case at all. That's a good point. It's, it's about adjustment. So if you, if you need that financial freedom, you so are the most courageous person. Five-bed detached well, house to I a three-bedroom well, family. Exactly. Or... Depending on where you live in the world and, and in which area, a lot of people go, oh, no, look, you know, look at the Joneses. They've yeah. had to downsize. I've had to use your name. Uh, but I think a lot of people, especially in our communities, yeah. they will look at you and go, my God, that takes courage. Okay. And it, uh, honestly, it's, it's hard. I think it's one of the most difficult decisions you can make in your lifetime. You are not letting anyone down. You are not a failure. It yeah. takes courage. And therefore, you will always be a winner because then you become the person in control of your financial and if that comes situation. down to something I'd not really thought about, because it's funny how you think of you think so differently to the way I think. Always. I think about lists, practicalities, and you've thrown in emotion there that I hadn't even considered. That um, one of the things again about this downsizing thing, if if you do have a fear of what friends and even relatives might think about it, that you're moving from the five bed detached house to this little three bedroom cottage, oh, have they got problems? The, the whole idea is that as the people doing that, you tell people why you're doing it. Do you know why I'm doing it? Because I'm going off cruising for two months of the year. I'm actually going to buy the car that I really want and really suits us. We're going to go and visit our family who are, you know, the other side of the country more often. We're going to go and see our relatives in Australia for the first time in 10 years. You are actually telling people it's not all about the house anymore. That was for my family. That was for us. It was a, a sign, obviously, of prosperity and how well we were doing because most people put the m maximum amount of money they can into their property. It's just the way we are. Absolutely. Um, but this is suddenly what you're suggesting is that if people are, have, have that angst, tell people about it. Yes. That's Absolutely. a really good thought. Never, never occurred to me. You and I. Now I know why I have you here. Oh, now I know why you. you work with me. <laughs> <laughs> He's such a joy. Yes. Love working with Adrian. I would also like to add that you and I are very, very strong on time. We believe you cannot buy back time, so you can't waste time, right? And with downsizing, for example, you are not wasting any time. You are gaining more time because you're not... When you start stressing about financial issues and, and, uh, and what's happening in the market, you are actually failing yourself, because you're not using that time wisely. But when you have downsized, you've got more financial freedom, as we know, you can actually make more memories. So therefore, you're buying into time. You can't buy time. You can't buy it back. But you're buying into time, therefore investing in yourself and your own happiness. And your home you'll be living in, therefore, will feel like an absolute blessing and 100% the right decision yeah. that you could ever have made.
And I point out here, this is not everybody downsized. This is coming back to this feeling I had working in the retirement sector. And, and I work in two locations now where we've got quite an ageing population. And I see regularly people and you think, if you knew how to do it uh, and were guided and overcome the psychological and emotional issues of doing it and understand the financial issues of it and how that can work for you, more people would do it. Um, and that's really the point we're trying to make here. And we've, we've scratched the surface of this. We could literally sit here all day and talk about um, how deep these emotional issues can go and how uh, embedded somebody is to their road. It may not be the greatest road, but if you've got four people in that road who know know who you are and know that if they don't see your car move for a couple of days you might not be very well you that's a really difficult thing it's to consider moving from and if it's so strong mm -hmm. you would never move and that's well, my mother that's it because community. she has those people in her own that's right it's your community so they might not be your yeah. family but they're your community therefore that becomes your security yeah and your safety absolutely. net is there anything that I've missed from that scratching the surface where we should have mentioned more? Because so we could go into deeper into this, but is there something else that you you think we should uh, highlight to people? As I say, we've got this guide that we can send. I think the best thing is for people just to give us a call and for us to come over and have a chat about it if you or anybody you know uh, wants to consider downsizing. Is there something that I um, may have missed out of, of no, discussion? No, no, I... Apart no, from the financials, no, I, I no, 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 you haven't. You've, I, I think we've touched on everything, and we've, you know, we've just scratched the surface, as, as you've said. And I think it's important for people to know the supports out there. So if you are planning to downsize, hundred percent, it's it's the right move to, yeah. to make. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, and as you said, we're more than happy to to talk with people when they're thinking about downsizing and going to see their homes that they need to sell and helping them find the home that will be right for them. That's actually one thing that um, we hadn't touched on because we didn't want to make this too much about selling houses and mm -hmm. buying houses, but it's what we do for a living, so it helps now and again. Um, one of the things that is important in this um, is actually one of the, one of the reasons we've, uh, I know people don't downsize. If they've overcome the, a lot of the issues we have talked about, they then say, that's great, Adrian, I love the idea, I'm going to, buy something that's at lower in value, I'm going to use that equity for whatever. Um, yes, I get the fact I only need three bedrooms, I don't need a big garden, but I can't find the house. I can't find the house I want to buy because what you don't do when you downsize is buy the house you lived in 20 years ago. It just doesn't feel right um, because that was on your ladder. Now when you downsize, you, there are certain things about that house you'd never buy. So that's something that we can look at doing with you as well. Um, because this is, if somebody wants to downsize tomorrow, call me. But this is about preparing. This is about, I might be wanting to do this in a couple of years' time. And we can help you sort of identify where those areas are. Identify how many of those properties physically exist in the area you might want to live in. And that could be a scary result. I did one last week with somebody. We put in criteria of the house they would buy as a downsize. And there were 11 properties available, not on the market, physically built that's not very many if you're waiting for somebody to move so some of that is really really good yes Candice thank you for that genuinely that insight was really good because you come from it from a completely different angle to me and that is why this works really really well and there's probably plenty more angles um, I mentioned the word scratch the surface and that what that's what this has done I hope that it has just stimulated some thoughts for you or anybody that you know as to why this is something to think of and consider there are some huge benefits for doing it and on paper it sounds like the easiest thing to do there are some massive obstacles in the way um, and it's a case of let's see if we can get through those so that um, downsizing really really works for you so coming back to those two questions is it the right thing to do and then if you think it is how do you then make it work on that subject the financial bits we'll be dealing uh, we'll talk about in the next uh, Sunday property breakfast podcast uh, Mike Roberts from Penny Matters is joining me it's going to be a really really good uh, talk about the financial side of that as well thanks again for uh, watching sharing and um, all the kind comments you've shown and we'll see you again soon thanks very much thank you Hi everyone, Supergirl here, and I am a super fan of SMJ Media Group. They provide support for local businesses, charities and events, and of course create fun content for all of you. If you enjoy our content and would like to help support us, please go to buymeacoffee.com slash SMJ Media Group and buy us a coffee.